Ready? I'll probably end up dropping it. Six. You're hanging on to me. After traveling to Castle Dracula in Transylvania, Jonathan Harker is held prisoner by the hidden while the wretched renders. Dracula's servant waits for his master in a lunatic asylum to inspire his demise. So Dracula shivers in the winter. He's driven northwards by a storm which came from the Dracula shivered in the winter. Is driven northwards by a storm which came from nowhere. <laughs> Lucy's friends and Dr. Van Helsing have tried desperately to bring her back. Oh, oh your mother! <laughs> Shut myself there. <laughs> Lucy retires to her coffin, neither dead nor alive. On the dead. Dracula is now pursued. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy is mortally wounded in the ensuing fight, but eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Dracula place. In shocking history of Prince Dracula and the woman he loved. What's the screams out there? Oceans of time to find you. Yeah. Exhumed the grave. The grave was 
empty. Where is Dracula? 400 years later, Bram Stoker, born in Dublin, Ireland, became a London theatre manager to a famous actor, Henry Irving, at the Lyceum. He was also an aspiring author. After writing several unsuccessful books, he took his family on holiday in the Yorkshire seaside town of Whitby, staying at a house in Royal Crescent on the West Cliff. His landlady, Fanny Parker, would lend her name to one of the book's main characters, Jonathan Parker. While looking over the harbour one day, he could see Tate Hill Sands, the site of a wreck of a Russian ship some years earlier. This gave him an idea for a new book he'd been researching called The Undead, with the main character, a Count Vampire. Part of his research took place in this very building and in the room where you are now sitting. In 1897, this building was known as the Captain's Reading Rooms. One of the buildings that Bram Stoker visited back in the 1890s is this one on my right. Back in his day, this was the Captain's Reading Room. Captains would anchor their ships in the harbor. I'd row across to these reading rooms to eat, drink, and meet other captains. They could read the London and local papers here and arrange future cargoes. Stoker also did much of his research here, asking the captains and locals about folklore. One of the captains, Captain Swales, becomes the Whitby fisherman, Mr. Swales, who was Dracula's first victim on Whitby. One such tale is of a huge black dog with red eyes known as the Barkeist Hound, which roams Whitby at night. It is rumored that anyone seeing this hound will be dead by morning. The ship and the black dog were integrated into his new story. He read about Prince Vlad Dracula, or Vlad the Imperial in Transylvania, and though he never went there, Vlad would form the basis for his main character, who he now named Count Dracula, a name which would famously enter the English language. Bram Stoker died in 1912 and did not want to be buried. He opted for cremation. Three chapters of the book take place in Whitby. Captain's Law, the Demeter. Left bar, bar for England. Ship blown off course by a storm, which came from nowhere. Something strange and frightening on board with us. Crew or dead, I fear I will not be long for this land. The ship enters with the armor, with the captain lashed to the ship's wheel, his broken neck swaying with the wind. It is wet on Tatil Sands. A huge black dog was seen to leap off the shipwreck and race up the 199 steps to the graveyard at St. Mary's Church near the ruins of Whitby Abbey. Lucy Westerner and Mina Murray were staying at the house of the Crescent, now East Crescent. Under a hypnotic trance, Lucy has drawn from her bed and outside along North Terrace and past the Royal Hotel to the top of Westbrook. From there, she would look across the harbour to the graveyard at Abbey opposite on East Cliff. There she saw two red eyes shining from the graveyard. She ran down the cliff past the fishing cobbles, along Haggis Gate at the back of this building, and over the bridge crossing the River Esk. She turned left along Church Street, past the marketplace of the old town hall and above Tato Sands. Then she continued on Haggis Cliff, now Henrietta Street, also known as the Hall of the Barkhouse Town. She raced up the 199 steps to the graveyard and to the grave of a suicide. There she saw a huge black shadow which rose to engulf her. That grotesque face. A fire. <laughs> this was her first encounter with Dracula, and it was the seal of her doom. <laughs> Dr. Van Helsing arrives to help our hero, Jonathan Harker, to fight the vampire and prevent his fiancée, Nina, from also being taken by Dracula. Van Helsing outlines the vampire's powers. He has the strength of 20 men. He can direct the elements, the wind, and the fog. He can control the meaner things, the wolf, the bat, and the rat. The last location of Whitby is the railway station, where Solicitor Bennett directs the building of the Prince of Earth with Dracula's sleeping body at one grave on its way to Berkeley, London. After further events in London, Parker, 
Arthur, Quincy, and Fanny Wilson. Chase Dracula back to Transylvania, where they succeed in cutting the Dracula's head from his body. It seems that Dracula's reign of terror is over. But consider this disdain on suspicion. Since vampires do not die, a vampire can follow you. Oh. oh, that was roasted. 